Last year, around this time, I created a video, which just so happens to be my most popular and most watched video on YouTube, called Linux Does Well When Don't, where I covered 10 reasons why I feel that Linux is better than Windows. And there have been a lot of really good arguments back and forth on both sides, but I figured I'd come back and revisit this topic because I have 10 more reasons why Linux does what Win don't, and that begins right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Let's start with number one, and uh, this is what actually prompted this. I recently made a video explaining that for those of you who wanted to get Linux running on a computer that is capable of uh, running a modern operating system, that you could use Plop Linux so that you could uh, get your uh, computer, which does not have the ability to boot from a USB, to be able to boot a flash drive so that you could install Linux. Let me give you an example. Last year, I had a Windows XP computer sent to me from a client that needed to be upgraded to Windows 7. They provided me with their Windows 7 disk, and I needed to transfer that image to a USB. Unfortunately, the computer did not have the ability to boot from the USB. So, I used Plop Linux, and Plop Linux allowed me to be able to boot from the USB and then get Windows installed. So, and is my understanding this can also work with Macs, but it needs to be a newer generation Intel to be able to get that to work. But this is a great way for you to get Linux on your machines using a USB drive, especially if you do not have a DVD-ROM drive installed on your computer. Don't throw away that old hardware, put it to work. Here's another fine example where Linux excels. You can take your hard drive out of your computer and move it to another machine and you can boot Linux. Try and do that with Windows. You're not going to have very much success. Why? Because Windows has Windows Genuine Advantage. They already know what kind of hardware you installed your copy of Windows on. And it's not going to let you put it in a different machine, unless, of course, it is an identical machine. But let's say it has different hardware. It's probably not going to work. You're going to end up having to reinstall Windows, all of your software, and all of your settings. Not very convenient at all. Let's face it, kids. The Windows registry that holds many of your user settings in Windows is not portable. In Linux, on the other hand, all of your settings are stored in your home folder. And all you have to do is copy your home folder over to a flash drive, and you can take your settings with you, especially if you're going to another computer that has Linux installed. So then you can open applications with the settings that you have, your browser, your applications that you run. Everything will run the same exact way that you have on your own Linux machine just by having all of these settings. This is also convenient and I put this to the test a number of times because as many of you know I've got done my fair share of distro hopping and I'd always back up my home directory to an external hard drive reinstall the new Linux distribution and then before booting into it I would copy all of my home settings over thereby allowing me to have the same Firefox settings without having to reset up my browser and everything. The same thing with my IRC client and all of the other software that I have installed. This is an amazing feature that you just can't do in Windows. Here's yet another good reason why Linux excels. You can legally build your own version of Linux. You can even sell it. Now some of you will argue that I mentioned this in the prior video, but let's take this a step further. Sure, you can go on the Pirate Bay and other illegal torrenting websites where you can find different spins of Windows, but I wouldn't even want to use them, namely because you don't even know what it is you're getting. Lord knows what kind of 
uh, viruses, Trojans, malware that comes pre-installed on those, and it is illegal! You cannot build your own version of Windows and distribute it for free. You can end up in prison and lose your rights to be able to use a computer entirely. Now, with Linux, that is a different story. You can make your own version of Linux and you can make it available. And as you can see on the screen here, this is my Linux distribution, Manharo Cup of Linux Edition. I built it on top of Manharo and this was put together at the request of my viewers who wanted ex to experience Linux the same exact way that I do. It's not the, it's a little unconventional in some of the things that I've set up, but it's what, how I personally enjoy using my computer, and I felt this would be something great to share with the community at their request. So Linux gives you the ability to make your own operating system, and you can freely distribute it without worrying about the cops knocking on your door. And that brings us to number five. Many of you know Windows XP has now expired. You will not be able to get any more updates for this. You'll have to manually update that system yourself. And try your best to remain protected. This isn't so with Linux. Now some of you may argue, well what about Ubuntu? Their LTS models, are there, uh, every, every uh, six months they're releasing a new distribution. Those expire, don't they? Well, yes, they do, but the thing is, if you're using a rolling release model, like the distribution that I just displayed on the screen that I built myself, that's a rolling release model. That one you only install once, and it never expires. Just keep it updated every two weeks. So there are versions of Linux that you can run that will never expire. And that's something Windows can't do. Linux has more file system options than Windows does, and it also has great interoperability. For instance, you, when you first install Linux, you can choose which file system you want. You have many different choices available to you. The most popular one right now that most people are using is ext4, but you can use riserfs or btrfs. Linux also has the ability to read Windows file systems out of the box without having to install any special software. Try and do that on a Windows in fresh install. You would have to go online, hunt down applications that would read the Linux file systems, and even then, you're not guaranteed to be able to write to those file systems. So this is yet another area where Linux excels over Windows. <laughs> This one is one of my favorites. In Windows, when you install applications, you have to run those installers one at a time. After you install Program X, if it altered any system files, you're going to have to reboot the computer, install your next application, reboot, wash, rinse, and repeat. I've said this time and time again. In Linux, you can install 20 or 100 applications with one simple command in the terminal. But you don't have to use the terminal on many distributions. Just open up your package manager and select a hundred applications and click the OK button and Linux will download those applications and install all of them for you and you'll be able to use them without rebooting your computer. How cool is that? So let's say you downloaded your live CD of Ubuntu Fedora, Manharo, or any other kind of Linux that's out there. You started the installer and you got tired of looking at the slideshow, so maybe you figured you want to get some work done. Well, guess what? You can do it. That's right. You can open up your web browser while the operating system is installing. You could play a game or launch any application that is pre-installed in the live environment and run them while your operating system is installing. All Windows gives you is a boring progress bar. Here is another one of my favorites. You can enjoy full control of your computer without worrying about 
back doors. Why? Because in Linux, you have access to the source code. You can read through the source code, and if you do spot any back doors, you can report it to the community. And believe me, the community doesn't want back doors in their software. Take my word for it. It ain't happening. When you use a Microsoft product, you are not in full control of your computer. Microsoft is. You have the user experience Microsoft wants you to have. When you run Linux, you are in control of your computer. If you don't like a piece of software, you can download the source code and you can change it. And then after changing that, we encourage you to share those changes so that the community can benefit from them. This is yet another reason why Linux does what Win don't. And finally, you can do the unthinkable in Linux. And I have a <laughs> I could I could go on and on and on on so many different things you can do. One thing you could do is you can transparently update a computer while someone is using it. For instance, my 71-year-old mother runs Linux and while she's using her computer, I can use Secure Shell to log into her machine and run updates for her. She has no technical experience, so I maintain her computer for her, and I can transparently run those updates whenever she's using her computer, and she can still play her games and do whatever she wants to do, and not even realize that her system is getting an update. And while we're on that same subject, you can have more than one person logged into the machine. Well, some of you will say you can do that in Windows. Yes, that's true. But only one person can be using that machine at one time. Whereas in Linux, you can have multiple users using the same machine at the same time using different desktop environments, such as uh, KDE, GNOME, Cinnamon, XFCE, and so on. So this is yet another strength, and if that's not good enough for you web developers, you might be interested in this one. Let's say you built a remarkable website, but you want to be able to test your website on multiple browsers. In Linux, you can install Internet Explorer 5, Internet Explorer 6, seven, eight, nine, and beyond. And then get this, you can run them all at the same time, right next to each other, and make a comparison of how your web creation is working across all of these different browsers. That's something you just cannot do in Windows. So at the end of the day, you will never hear me say, don't use Windows. I used it for most of my computing career. However, Linux has redefined how I use my computer. My computer obeys me. My computer gives me the experience that I want to have. It has redefined the way I do my computing today. And I can't thank the Linux community enough for their contributions, this work of human genius that is available to you, free and open source. As a reminder, please consider supporting the show hosts who are bringing you the content you enjoy the most by disabling your ad blockers or shouting some coins. Peace out.